You want to know the great thing about hospitals? Everything is on wheels. All right, so I haven't had a chance to, uh, I haven't felt like it, to record a, a video, a webisode since the surgery. But um, I'm going to try to explain exactly what happened with the surgery. Uh, before I get to that, I'm doing good. Uh, this is pretty typical. It hurts. I'm not going to lie. I've got um, I've got a main line into my neck still. That should come out here pretty soon. And then um, I still got my my chest tubes, two big tubes, um, allowing the excess blood to drain drain from my chest. Uh, those slow you down quite a bit. Uh, they hurt when they come out, but um, they're a relief when they when they do. So Dr. Lampros came by earlier this morning, about 20 minutes ago, and said he may come back later on later on today and uh, and pull those out. But uh, <clears throat> we will see. Yeah, I'm still fighting a bit of a raspy voice from having the the breathing tube uh, in there, and I'll get to that in a I'll get to that in a second. But um, but I'm doing good. They're taking really good care of me, and um, this is the this is the hard part. And uh, hopefully I can go home in a in a few days. Definitely want to try to get home Saturday so I can watch the watch the race Saturday night race. Um, so that's my goal at least. So um, what happened? Well, the surgery went well. Um, the 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 team of surgeons I think there was five of them were really really cool. Uh, the anesthesiologist Chris. Um, I was really worried about having they put this your hand on a like on, like on like a brick and they put this line in it's this main line and you can still see the, the scar from it there and it hurts really really bad when they put it in um, but he was kind enough to wait until I was knocked out before he went and put that in it was really it was really really cool so I remember going into the operating room and sort of seeing everybody around me, and and um, you know, I was pretty much in a haze then, and didn't really have any fear. They pump you full of so much stuff that you know you don't you don't you don't feel you don't feel any kind of emotion. Um, but then I went to sleep, and uh, that was surgery was at 7:30 in the morning, and I want to say they were wrapped up seven, eight, nine, ten by a noonish, I think. I didn't wake up until later in the day, till like four. Um, but when I woke up, it wasn't too bad. I had the breathing tube down my throat for a little while, but um, um, they ended up taking out pretty quick, and that wasn't that wasn't so bad. So, so what did they find? Well, what they found was that I shouldn't be here right now. Um, when they cracked open my chest, they found something that they hadn't seen before. And what it looks like is a, like a combination of things. It looks like the other surgeon may have taken some of the sac that your heart um, that your heart's in and had created a bit of a um, of an enclosure around the aorta. Sometimes surgeons do that to just kind of protect it. Okay. So, along with that, they found this pulsating baseball-sized mass. It was actually, it had a pulse. Okay, this is where the, the leak was. Um, they said it was hard, it was leathery. It just sounds disgusting. But, they didn't know what to what to make of it. So they started getting all the excess gunk out of the area. And then they went after this this pulsating mass and started to slice into it and take pieces out. They brought in Dr. Watson, cardiologist who was the one who discovered the 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 hole in the first place with the T E scan down my throat. And they brought him in and once they got it clear they looked at my graft 
And sure enough, they found a hole. It was about the size of a pencil lead, just punctured right, right in my aorta. Now, it wasn't the catheter that we had talked about in the other video. That was there, that was sutured up and fine. This was a completely separate hole. Um, the only explanation, there's a couple of different options, or a couple of different things that may have happened. Either the graft itself was just effective. You know, this stuff is supposed to be really, 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 really tough. I mean, you could, you could, like I said, dangle from the roof on this stuff and it wouldn't tear. Perhaps when they were sewing up that, that enclosure from the sack from my heart, um, the, the, the needle went too deep and nicked it. And with that, they didn't realize that it was, because the blood was kind of pooling up underneath it and closed me up. But there really isn't any other explanation. I mean, what we know is that, uh, I mean, I was a walking time bomb. Um, if that thing were to have broken open, I'm, I'm done. I basically traded one aneurysm for another aneurysm, and it protected me. You know, God protected me for three and a half years. Um, five pumps. The doctor said five pumps. And that's it. Game over. Now, Dr. Lampros, my surgeon, he did say that in all likelihood that enclosure could have protected me for who knows how long. He didn't see any any reason why it would um, it was going to burst, but certainly wasn't something that we wanted to have in my body in retrospect. So, so there you go. I'm alive. I'm in better shape than I was, you know, three and a half years ago after it, now knowing what we know, and I'm on my way to recovery. So, probably be a couple of weeks before I get back on the air. I'll be doing the show from home for a while, but um, probably at least another two weeks, including this one, before I'm able to crack the mic again. Got my little breathing apparatus. You might remember this from previous videos. And I'm already doing way better on this thing than I did the last time, so I gotta thank uh, Danya who brought me I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I can turn the turn the camera around so that you can see it over there. See the goofy guy on the wall and the bunny in the corner. Don, you got me goofy balloon guy and Danny and Chris from Evolution Fitness came by and uh, saw me and brought me the pink bunny in an Evolution Fitness t-shirt. I thought that was that was pretty cool. So, um, and again, thanks everybody for your for your uh, outpouring of emotion. I'm trying to get the lighting right. Um, I just every time I post something on Facebook, it it's just the responses I get are fantastic and I just can't tell you how comforting that has been through all of this so all right I can't get my lighting back I'm gonna go pass out actually I think I'm gonna watch something on Netflix so uh, I'll post something probably when I get home all right thanks for watching bye